Hey everybody, this is Gary, Maine Brew Guy. I wanted to do a quick video on a few things here. One of them is New England IPA. Those of you who have seen a lot of my videos on New England IPAs may know that I, am, I do what's called a throw punch, which typically is three, four different hop varieties in it. I usually add mangoes to it. So that, that is throw punch, it has mangoes in it. Otherwise, it's just a New England IPA for me. But this is throw punch that's been in the keg now for probably over eight weeks and Still holding strong. It's, you can see it's very bright still. If you follow the um, the, the guidelines that I put out in that uh, NEPA video, that's exactly what I do, and um, uh, they should hang out like this forever. Well, not forever. We're gonna find out how long. This one I brewed eight months ago. I kept the can around because I wanted to see how it held up against it. Same recipe. So let's check it out. Oh, and by the way, before we check it out, check out the shirt. This is a BrewTubers, what is it? What do we call it? It's membership shirt. So this is a BrewTubers membership shirt. So it's BrewTubers and if BrewTubers, if we didn't have a language and we just did icons, it'd be water plus barley plus hops plus yeast plus magic equals beer equals happy face equals YouTube equals repeat. Anyway, <laughs> I'm such a geek. Anyway, here we go. Let's see how this turned out. Uh, right away, I can tell you that this beer, now I gotta drink two of them. Oh well. This speaks volumes to strict standards when it comes to oxygen pickup. Oh, look at these beers. Same recipe. In fact, this one looks a little darker, this one looks a little lighter. Big citrus aroma, big mango all of the things that you get on there. Okay, so there's the difference. It held up nice as far as oxidation is concerned. I gotta level this table. It held up well for oxidation, but not for aroma. Like the aroma, let me, let me just take a little swig off the head here. Okay, just so I, the head isn't burying that aroma. Okay, so odd, that's, that's strange. So you can tell that this is somewhat oxidized as far as the hops are concerned, but not in the sense where the beer is like cardboard smelling. This is bright citrus and um, ripe fruits, just really pleasant. This is more of, uh, God, I'm trying to think. It's, it's more of a clean smell, less aromatic. Oh God, I can't even put my finger on that, that aroma. It's very faint, but uh, definitely this beer. Uh, this one is just so like fresh. This one is, is still smells good, but it doesn't have the same, it is same as this one, but not only that, it's not the same as it was. So I know that these were similar beers. All right, just a clean kind of, I think I'm just picking up the, I may have just lost all the dry hop aroma. All right, let's go for it. It's still really good. That's crazy. October, no, it hasn't been eight months. What am I talking about? I gotta date these things. I'd have to go look back. I'll put it underneath. But I think it was October, the beginning of October. No, it couldn't have been because we did October, we did Spooktoberfest the beginning of October. So it was September, October, November, December. January, so four months in the can, as opposed to eight weeks in the can. I mean, sorry, eight weeks in the keg. I've tasted, that is weird. So I have tasted this in commercial products before when New England IPAs have had, um, they were a little long on the tooth on the shelf and I'm getting that same character, but it's not oxidized, almost an onion quality, light onion quality. It's like that onion theol. Mm -mm, not on this one. Bright orange, bright mangoes, bright pineapples, a little bit of citrus and a little bit of onion, sort of not powerful onion, just a whiff. You're saying it weird. Why are you putting so much emphasis on the H? <laughs> 
you put the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable. The flavor follows the nose here, but it, it finishes like this one does. So that's really strange. This one finishes like this one does, but from the nose through the middle, it has sort of that balancing citrus, light citrus and light onion quality. And, and I've gotten this in commercial beers. I may not be describing it properly, but I've gotten this on commercial New England IPAs that have been long in the tooth. Okay, so it's already starting to attract fruit flies um, with a fruity aroma. Four months in a can. Yeah, I'm shocked that it's uh, it's it's held up like it's held up this well. Yes, yeah, so much cleaner, crisper, brighter, and it's faded some since I brewed it because it is eight weeks in the keg yet. But um, still, still amazing. <clears throat> Yeah, that's all I got, but um, I wanted to show you that going back to the original video and following strict practices, uh, you can get good shelf stability on your New England IPAs if um, you're not drinking them fast. They can hang around and be very delicious for quite a while. This keg is almost done. That's why I wanted to get this done now. Uh, it, eight weeks in a, in a keg for me is usually about right, and then uh, I end up blowing it out not too long after that. And that's only if I'm drinking it. We haven't had company in a while, so I have been the only one drinking these beers. But I'm glad I left this one around from the last batch. And some of you all did get this beer uh, when I sent it out last time. But I, I can tell you, it has faded. It, there's been a change in the hop aroma for sure. Also, I want to give a huge shout out to Nick and Brandon at uh, Exit 12 Brewing. The first time I tried to brew a New England IPA, it came out like this, like the, maybe the first few days. And after about a week and a half in the keg, it slowly started getting brown. And it got brown and more brown. And pretty soon it was just horribly undrinkable. And I ended up dumping the keg. And so I tried it again and with different hops, different grains and um, same thing. So. I started digging into the, um, the style a little bit and then realized I was picking up oxygen. That's what I had been hearing, reading, whatnot. And then a Nick and Brandon had sent me Foam Space or, or Sam, one or the other, in the uh, Traveling Growler. Oh my God, that was so good. I remember it looking similar to this, by the way, but I remember it being me being amazed at how well that came out. So I started picking their brain a little bit and found out that they were doing, you know, pressure fermenting, pressure transfers, and I hadn't been doing any of that. I had started reading up on it, but I didn't really, I wasn't really totally buying into it. I was thinking that maybe it was a gimmick. I wasn't sure. So the more I read and the more I talked to them, the more I decided that's it, I'm buying a Firmzilla. I'm changing all, everything over to closed transfers. That's something about me that once I commit to something, I'm like all in, like I'm, I'm changing everything. I'm, I'm changing the process. I'm all in on that. Yeah, so I, I got a, a big shout out to you guys that got me into that thinking in that process and thinking down that road, like, hey, maybe there is something to this pressure transfer, you know, low oxygen pickup, uh, pressure fermenting, uh, you, you name it, all of the things that you guys turned me on to. When you sent me that beer, I was like, holy shit, you can make a really good New England IPA in the home brew space. Yeah, cheers to you guys for that. I'm gonna go with this one. It's my old motto, and I don't use it too much in my videos, but it really applies here. Share knowledge and brew great beer. Cheers. Hey, like